Hi, this is Ibarian X from The Candid Frame, and I'm back with a new series of videos. Now, I take a look at all the pictures that people have been submitting to the Candid Frame Flickr pool, and one of the reasons I like looking through the photographs is, is I like being pushed. I like seeing photographers making choices or seeing in a way that I that I just don't do or, or, or don't see myself doing when I'm out there. I'm paying a lot of attention to light, to, to composition, to how I'm juxtaposing various elements in the frame. But just like you probably, you, I find myself sometimes making the same photographs over and over and over again. There, there are certain, there are certain tropes or th certain things that I return to just because I know they work, that I can take a, a good photograph if I do such and such. But I don't just want to be making the same photographs over and over again. I really want to be challenging myself. I want to surprise myself every, every once in a while. I want to see pictures and create pictures that I don't think I would have created before. So when I go through the candid frame flicker pool, I'm always looking for something that surprises me. And I think that's the most exciting thing that I can discover. I mean, there are, I mean, there are so many good photographs that are being submitted, but I can't say that a lot of them surprise me. And it's not to say that I think I could make those photographs myself given the same circumstances. I, I probably couldn't. But I'm really looking for pictures that when I see them, I go, Wow, that's a really interesting choice. And that's what I wanted to do. I just picked a few images that I think sort of, well, typify that for me. But I want you to challenge yourself when you're taking a look at the at the pictures that are submitted to our to our pool. Look at some of the these pictures and ask yourself, would I have taken the same shot in the same way? And why am I not making different choices when I go out there? Especially if you find yourself in a rut and you feel like you're just making the same photographs over and over. Here is uh, Franco Milanese from Venezuela. He shot this with a Fuji uh, X100S, and this was shot at 1 680th of a second at f5.6 at ISO 200. Now, this is a, an image of this couple embracing in front of this Mustang at, at what appears to, to be a beach, and this is a, a, a really a wonderful, a wonderful moment. But when I think about how most of us would want to take this photograph, we would want to include more of the couple in the frame. We wouldn't want it obscured by the car, by the vehicle, because it's blocking most of the people except for just the, their faces and the guy's shoulder. But I think that's why I really like the shot is the fact that he's showing so little of the, the figures there, but we totally get what that moment is and but the, the reason this image works so well is how he's using the car within the context of the frame this car is such an important element of this of this shot it's it's really amazing that uh, that graphically it's it's just this incredible presence the the car itself is a personality in in this image Particularly because of the uh, that door being open, uh, it really gives you a sense of of not only the age of the car but the overall condition of the car, and uh, uh, it really provides a, a wonderful uh, a sense of of the vehicle itself and the relationship that I that I would assume that this guy has with this this car and with this woman that he's embracing. But I think that the, the graphic lines of this vehicle really lead us into that frame. I mean, it, it starts, that stripe that runs down the, the back of the hood, uh, the trunk of the car, uh, that's the first thing I go to. And yet that line will lead me up the, the back, back window, up towards the horizon where, where that couple is. And my eye just kind of is guided up to that point where we see these these couple this couple in a real loving loving embrace but there's more that's going on here i mean if you look at that driver's side window there appears to be a a woman uh with a small child or look, looks like a small child uh moving towards the uh the shoreline and that's that's such a small element in this frame but it is such a 
it's such an important and wonderful element. It, it serves as a nice complement to what's happening with the couple there. And you would think that, wow, when you, when you, if you ask yourself, what is this image about? Almost without exception, most of us would say it's about this embrace. But think about that. Think about what the biggest element in this shot is. It's the car. This car takes up almost 50% of the, of the frame here. But it's the relationships that are being revealed, not only with the couple that's embracing, but the two figures that seem to be in the, in the distance. I mean, that's, that to me is kind of interesting. It's kind of phenomenal to think that two elements that are so, so small within the frame uh, can still convey that, that understanding, that feeling, that, you know, that, that connection even though this thing, this vehicle, dominates the frame. How many, how many times has an image of yours been ruined because there's a car in the frame, especially a white car or something like that? There's something in the foreground that completely ruins it. But in this shot, it doesn't. And I look at that, and I look at the, the choice to shoot, shoot, shoot it this way, and I'm really impressed. I really like it. And uh, it makes me think about how sometimes I'm in a rush to sort of jockey for a position because I want to get a better view of a subject. And, and maybe I, I need to be a little more open to considering that maybe there's something that's in my way, literally, that if I choose to look at it differently, may allow me to make a photograph that I completely would have missed otherwise. Um, I, I really like this shot. I think it's a really phenomenal. Here's a shot by Simon Peacock, a shot with a Leica camera AG, Leica Q. Shot at 1 400th of a second at F2 uh, at ISO 100. Now, to a large extent, I think that I would make an image similar to this in terms of lighting. Uh, oftentimes, if I'm shooting in the very early morning or the late afternoon, I will find a spot where I'm getting some really directional light coming into a scene and I will use it to my advantage. I will position myself so that I can have a subject walking into into the light. And when people are walking into the light, they're kind of blinded, so they're not, it's not immediately obvious that there's a, a photographer in, in front of them ready to take their photograph when they come when they come into range. But what I what I like about this shot, and it's interesting is that this person is a little closer to the edge of the sidewalk and instead of just simply sh shooting straight on and allowing people to walk directly into him he's positioned slightly off uh, off center of of the sidewalk and is turning the camera towards the uh the background which allows him to include the other woman that comes walking into the light and i think that's that for me is a small difference, but it's something that I I want to remember when I go out and shoot that that the position where I place myself can be really key because I could have positioned myself in a similar situation so that the persons were walking directly towards me and I might have gotten a similar shot. But I think having that woman in the background and having having this other people who are though out of focus. Uh, are still playing a role in this in this overall in this overall shot. It's really kind of interesting. I'm just noticing it that we have these two faces in this display that have a profile very similar to this to this woman here. It's kind of it's kind of neat. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's 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 about when I when I'm dealing with light like this and I'm positioning myself on the street where I am choosing to stand is such is of such critical importance. And I'm always thinking about that. But sometimes I have to think about, oh, how can I position myself a little differently? Uh, one of the ways I often do that is is making sure that I'm not just at eye level. I will drop down to waist level or sometime down, or get down on my knees in order to get that different different perspective. So I just don't make that same shot over and over again. Uh, light is great. Gesture is great. But sometimes where you're standing and how you're standing 
can make a huge, huge difference. I mean, this shot just is just wonderful. I mean, so many of these shots are typically made with just one figure, and the fact that you have multiple figures in here, all with very different expressions, is just really interesting. I mean, this shot, I mean, the more and more I look at it, the, the more excited I get about it. Not only the light, but you got this, you got this gesture of the hand, uh, and that that sh that shadow of the hand is on her face. We have this hand here. Um, I love the way the in the crook of this arm, this woman's face is framed. Uh, I don't know if there's a relationship between these two women. I would assume that because they're so close to each other, and it assumes that they're talking to each other, that there that there is. But I love the fact that there's some some hints of a relationship between these uh, these two, and that this woman here. Who has, which seems to have this sort of stark determination to get wherever she's going, um, provides a nice counterpoint to this. I mean, and also the fact that they're so close. I mean, what, what's the lens you're using on this thing? 28 millimeter? Great. I mean, but with a 28 millimeter uh, focal length or, or wider, you got to get in close. You can't shoot this stuff from 8 or 10 feet away and expect it to have the same impact that, that it has here. So Simon does a great job with, with respect to that. Now here's a uh, Monsieur Andre uh, shooting with a Fuji X100T at 150, 150th of a second at f5.6 at ISO 200. And here's a scene that's not on the street. It's just uh, a park or some some sort of countryside. And this is such a lovely graphic shot, right? I mean, we have the lion of the land coming in here. We have this pathway. We have the trees. We have all these what a wonderful lines. It, didn't, it looks to be an overcast day, so we don't have a, you know, the, the the billowous clouds or anything like that. It's a pretty monotone sort of sky, which usually is something that as photographers we want to avoid. But in this case, really works, especially with the rendering of the shot as a black and white. Uh, and look at the payoff in this shot. At the end of the path, we have a woman and a child. And and even though the child is such a small element of the frame, their arms are extended to their left and, and right. And it seems like there's a, a, a feeling of joy that's happening in, in this moment. Even though we can't see the girl's expression or the woman's expression. And, and all we can see is just these almost ant-like figures in this frame. But it... It makes the shot tremendously, and I like that uh, that this scene, which could be a, a really nothing scene because there's not a lot happening. There's not something. It's not as dramatic as the scene we just looked at before, right? Where these people are walking into the light, they're talking to each other, they have this big hand. You know, we're right in the faces of these people, and it's a really dramatic shot. And here we have the exact opposite of that, but somehow there is an emotional resonance to this shot. And I, and when I look at this shot, I wonder whether I would have made it, whether I would have been paying enough attention to see the potential of the moment. One of the things that, that you know I have to remind myself is, regardless of where I'm walking to, if I'm walking to the corner store or I'm walking down the street to get lunch or anything like that, then I always have to be practicing seeing that as ordinary or as mundane as the, the 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 place I'm walking to may be, that there may be the potential for something wonderfully photographic that's right in front of me, and that I'm not seeing it because I'm too preoccupied with the noises in my head. And th this scene, for me, reminds me of something like that because I could be walking around here and I could be judging the sky, going, "Oh, the sky is not particularly great. Oh, this path I'm trying to get. I'm trying to get to this destination where I think something really interesting is going to happen." This is sort of could be a really sort of an in between moment. Yet, if I'm completely present, what this this special thing that's happening could be revealed to me. And I don't know what the story is for uh, Andre here, and you know what what led up to this image. But for me, that's what it reminds me of. It it, it reminds me to constantly be vigilant. That every time I'm I'm stepping out of my door, regardless of what ordinary thing I'm out to do, having my camera in hand and carefully looking, constantly looking, and being open to the potential that every 
every single moment of my day provides me. And uh, it can result in just wonderful shots, just, just like this. So hopefully I'm back on schedule and we'll be able to produce uh, more videos for you on a more regular basis. Uh, so uh, keep submitting images, comment about each other's photographs, and, uh, and give me some feedback every once in a while and let me know what you think about these, uh, uh, these videos. And if you have found this for the first time and you don't know anything about the Candid Frame, well, I encourage you to uh, visit thecandidframe.com where I produce a podcast in which I interview photographers from all over the world and all different genres of photography, from fashion to, to photojournalism to documentary photography. Well, it's everything. And uh, the conversations are not about gear or equipment. They're about photography and leading a creative life. So if that's something you want more of, and you're not getting it from uh, your your other YouTube channels or other podcasts, well, the Candid Frame is the place where you should be. So check that out. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you'll get each update uh, on your feed immediately as soon as it's up. So thanks again, guys, and I will see you next time.